Hello everybody and welcome to this video looking at City of Brass. This is a new indie roguelike first person shooter title that's been developed by an Australian group actually and this is a fairly common genre at the moment amongst uh, indie developers. They seem to be enjoying putting together the first person shooter roguelike and I wanted to do a video on it, not so much to review it because I have got a review going up on digitallydownloaded.net and I didn't want to repeat myself across the review in this video. But what I wanted to use this video for was to explore a particular part of this game or a particular thing about this game that I find absolutely fascinating and that's the name of it and the location, the setting. Uh, city of Brass, for people who don't know, is uh, a lost city that's referenced in uh, 1001 Arabian Nights which is a collection of folklore and stories and myths from the Islamic uh, or Middle Eastern world or as far as China, so the kind of the, the Orient, the exotic um, parts of the, the world as far as us Westerners are concerned. And like I said, it's, an, it's a lost city, a bit like Atlantis or Yamatai from the, uh, the Japanese. And it's fascinating for the same reasons that Atlantis and um, those other kind of lost cities are. You know, it's, it's positioned as a place of extreme danger and it's a ghost city and it's... Um, got all kinds of treasures and stuff which for the brave of heart and soul uh, are just right for the picking which is kind of the purpose of this game so rather than yeah rather than review the game uh, through this video I wanted to actually tell the story of the city of brass and while you're watching me play it that'll give you a sense of you know how well the developers have done at capturing the atmosphere and the uh, the nature of the city as described in in the book um, or in the story so I think they've done an amazing job and uh, hopefully after listening to this you do as well. Okay, so here is the passage from 1001 Arabian Nights which describes the city of brass. And there appeared to them a great black object with two seeming fires corresponding with each other in position in the distance in that black object. Whereupon the Emir Musa said to the Sheikh what is this great black object, and what are these two corresponding fires? The guide answered him, Be rejoiced, O Emir, for this is the city of brass, and this is the appearance of it that I find described in the Book of Hidden Treasures, that its wall is of black stone, and it hath two towers of brass of N El Andalus, which the beholder seeth resembling two corresponding fires, and thence it is named the city of brass. They ceased not to proceed until they had arrived at it, and lo, it was lofty, strongly fortified, rising high into the air, impenetrable. The height of its walls was eighty cubits, and it had five and twenty gates, none of which would open but by means of some artifice. And there was not one gate to it that had not, within the city, one like it. Such was the beauty of the construction and architecture of the city. They stopped before it and endeavoured to discover one of its gates, but they could not. And the Emir Musa said to the Sheikh, Ebs en Samad, O Sheikh, I see, not to the, I see not to this city any gate. The Sheikh replied, O Emir, thus do I find it described in the Book of Hidden Treasures, that it hath five and twenty gates, and that none of the gates may be opened but from within the city. And how, said the Emir, can we contrive to enter it? and divert ourselves with a view of its wonders. Then the Emir Musa ordered one of his young men to mount a camel and ride round the city in the hope that he might discover a trace of a gate or a place lower than that to which they were opposite. So one of his young men mounted and proceeded around it for two days 
with their knights, prosecuting his journey with diligence and not resting. And when the third day arrived, he came in sight of his companions, and he was astounded at that which he beheld of the extent of the city and its height. Then he said, O Amir, the easiest place in, in it is this place at which we, ye have alighted. And thereupon the Emir Musa took Talib, the son of Sal, and the Sheikh Abd Ez Samad, and they ascended a mountain opposite the city, and overlooking it. And when they had ascended the mountain, they saw a city than which eyes had not beheld any greater. Its pavilions were lofty, and its domes were shining. Its mansions were in good condition, and its rivers were running. Its trees were fruitful, and its gardens bore ripe produce. It was a city with impenetrable gates, empty, still, without a voice or a cheering inhabitant, but the owl hooting in its quarters, the birds skimming in circles in its areas, and the raven croaking in its districts and its great thoroughfare streets, and bewailing those who had been in it. The Emir Musa paused, sorrowing for its being devoid of inhabitants, and its being despoiled of people and dwellers, and he said, Extolled be the perfection of him who ages, and times change not, the creator of the creation by his power. And while he was extolling the perfection of God, to whom be ascribed might and glory, he happened to look aside, and, lo, there were seven tablets of white marble appearing from a distance. So he approached them, and behold, they were sculpted and inscribed, and he ordered that the writing should be read. Therefore the Sheikh Ebs, Abs Ez Samad advanced and examined them and read them, and they contained admon admonition, the matter, for example, and restraint, unto those endowed with faculties of discernment. Upon the first tablet was described, in the ancient Greek character, O son of Adam, how heedless art thou of the case of him who hath been before thee. Thy years and age have diverted thee from considering him. Okay, I'm back and not reading anymore. Um, obviously, the story goes on for significantly longer than that. Uh, a Thousand and One Arabian Nights was quite the wordy text, and the City of Brass story is a significant one. I didn't want to read the entire story because that would put you all to sleep, but I did want to give you a sense of what the city was because this is very core and fundamental to City of Brass as opposed to a lot of other games out there and opposed to other uh, roguelike first person shooters this one really does put a lot of effort into getting the setting right it's, it's a game in which exploring the setting is key to its success and it's impressive that the developers have managed to do such a good job I think of capturing that sense of um, of majesty that's kind of described through that story. Uh, obviously, you know, we don't have to go through the process of trying to find a way into the city as described in, in the story, but once you're there, that sense of desolation, but of the kind of the grand walls and the fact that it's all still in pretty good condition, despite the fact that it's a lost city and nobody's lived there for quite a while, all of that kind of combines to create a very authentic setting and one that's very believably kind of Middle Eastern. I mean, I've read uh, 1001 Arabian Nights a dozen times it's actually one of my favorite books if not my favorite book of all time and I find the exotic setting and I find the fantasy of it all really appealing and it's very hard to actually please me with this kind of thing because I do kind of expect that whoever creates a story be that a film book or, or game that's set in that kind of fantasy Middle East does their job to to research it and to reflect it in a way that's not exploitative but is and is authentic um so yeah it, it's difficult to do especially you know this developer again comes from australia so the amount of research they would have had to have done to kind of try and to kind of capture it in a sensitive and authentic way um is, is really impressive and the other great thing about city of brass is that it is a ghost story and it has very strong horror elements uh, a thousand and one arabian nights crosses a wide number of different genres from kind of high adventure to science fiction even uh, and it has a couple of stories that have horror elements to them including City of Brass. Uh, in fact in a, in a lot of ways when you read it you can kind of imagine that it has 
kind of Lovecraftian elements. I mean, if you've ever read some of Lovecraft stories, particularly something like uh, At the Mad uh, Mountains of Madness, you certainly get a sense that City of Brass has that same sense of mystery and sinister mystery to it, which means that as you're exploring it, you're kind of expecting to, to run into all kinds of horrific things. And this game does that in part by making it so difficult that you actually uh, kind of... You're, you're watching your back constantly as you play City of Brass. As a roguelike, it was always welcome. It, it was always meant to be challenging, but I think this one's challenging even by the standards of roguelikes and certainly more intense than a lot of the other roguelike first-person shooters that I've played. Uh, so in that kind of that, that genre format, this game captures the City of Brass thing quite well. But it's not just that too. It, it's also the monster design is all very... As you can see, as you would have seen as I've been playing this, they are all kind of uh, zombie-like or skeleton-like monsters. This is only early on in the game. Um, you know, it took me a while to get past the first couple of levels, and by then I wasn't really recording video footage anymore. But um, the, the variety of monsters does obviously increase the further on you get through it. This is just the start of it. But immediately it has that, and I hate to say this because I hate to use this game to reference anything anymore because it's become such a cliché, but it has that Dark Souls uh, initial theme to it, I guess, that everything seems kind of uh, almost peaceful, almost quiet, almost serene, because the enemies aren't exactly imposing until you realize that they're quite deadly uh, and the, the really big dramatic stuff hasn't quite happened yet. So I think that this game does a really good job of really setting that tone uh, and setting the the sense that this is a, a place of antiquity and it's a place where you know people haven't lived for a long time and it's kind of peaceful as a result the further on you get that initial atmosphere kind of starts to get a bit challenged but that first impression is always left with you that you really are exploring a place that people haven't been for a very long time it's a lost city and you get to feel kind of in an Indiana Jones like I guess is the, probably the best way to describe it and you know that kind of goes to the whip that you have as one of your major weapons as well it kind of fits with that theme so the consistency of the game the consistency of the setting the way that the developers have really portrayed it really does actually make this one of my favorite games that I've played this year as a fan of a thousand one Arabian Nights the developers have done such a good job and we haven't seen any developer do that in such a long time so it's a huge relief to me that it's turned out well because I had a lot of hopes pinning on it and I will be playing this for a long time into the future so thanks very much for watching that uh, and I hope you go and pick up a copy of the thousand one Arabian Nights now because it's a really great book and I think you'll enjoy it if you enjoyed if you enjoy City of Brass if you enjoy this kind of setting you really enjoy what a thousand one Arabian Nights has to offer as well so thanks very much for your time and we will see you at the next video